There's a bunch of these rust bunch of these rustic roads all over Wisconsin. Well hey motor warriors. I am back out here on this what they call a rustic road. It reminds me of the a lot of the roads back in East Tennessee, gravel, except for this one's probably in better shape than a lot of those are. But I'm going through this marsh area and this all around me is like mucky swampy stuff it's hard to see through the trees near on the edge of the road but if you can look out there it's all marsh but there's a lot of people that come out here and hunt it's called the what the white river wildlife area couldn't read all the signs on it but this area gets filled in the fall the autumn it gets filled with all kinds of there's little pothole or little areas that are open and it gets filled with ducks all different kinds of ducks and geese and I think even swans and stuff will come up in here and and great blue herons and egrets and all that the stuff to the side there if you've never seen cattails that's that's what that stuff is those reeds there are cattails going by kind of hard I'm sure it's hard to see on the camera little patches like that are, are a little drier and that's where a lot of times you'll find deer but the only thing is that by the time you try and get up in there they'll either see you hear you smell you or something and they're long gone before you can even get there or they'll sneak you'll go in one side and they'll sneak out the other see this is where like when the birds are migrating this is what you would where you would find a lot of ducks and geese and whatever else. Yeah, there's already somebody up here. Looks like he's fishing. Dang it. It's hoping I get up here nobody here. Oh, every day is a good day for a ride. Because right. technically I wouldn't have to leave because it's public area. So if I wanted to fly the drone, I could fly the drone, but I am a nice man, so I'm going to leave on your behalf. No, if you want to stay here, I'll leave. Yeah. Well, I cut that conversation with that guy out because uh, he had a pretty foul mouth and a really, really bad attitude. And uh, he was telling me about, you know, some other spot down the gravel roadways that was just like that with a pullover and everything. So I jumped on the bike, rode all the way to the end of the gravel road. There was nothing there. Uh, and the whole thing is only like five and a half miles long. So I went down and there was nothing there. Um, so I, I, I turned around and went back and then I'll tell you the rest of the story uh, at the end of the run. I think I talk about that on the end, but I turn around and go back. He's gone. I fly my drone. This drone is called an Eashin 511S, and uh, I haven't had it very long. And the first time I, I tried to fly it, I was made the mistake of going near this stream, not too far from the house. And I was trying to get down low by the water, and there was a over a branch that was sitting over it that I didn't even see. It was really thin, and I barely touched it, and it sp spun it around and dropped it into the water. And the water was not even knee deep. I ran out there and got it, but everything was soaked by the time I got to it. And since then, it doesn't uh, really shoot very good <laughs> images. I do have another camera now. I'll, I'll use that in future videos uh, for the most part. But uh, this one, it keeps changing um, the, I don't know what they call it, the contrast or whatever. But I just wanted to give you an idea of 
what it looks like up there. This is all, um, you know, patches of dry ground uh, and then some like dogwood and that's kind of has a tendency to, be, tendency to be a little bit drier patches. And then a lot of the lower stuff you see is just marsh. It's just muck. You walk through that stuff and, you know, you, you can sink up to your knees or your waist. And, you know, if you're not young and healthy and, you know, in great shape, you try to walk in that stuff. Uh, you know, there's been people who got out there and got stuck and ended up dying of heart attacks trying to get out of it. And it can be a pretty, pretty tough walk. So, but anyway, that's what it looks like from the air. Yeah, this is the river. I don't know how much of it you can see back there. It's hard to turn around. I stopped at the last minute, but I was going up right there, and then the river comes like this and just keeps curving around through there. It's a great place to come out in a kayak, so you'll see once in a while kayaks and canoes, but there are spots that it's hard to get under the bridges or through the deadfalls that branches you know trees that fell across the river so it takes a lot of work so not a whole lot of people go down it but there are sections that are nice from what i've been told there's some guy there when i pulled up and he looked like he was just getting out his chair and his fishing tackle and whatever he was going to fish there and the other day i came out and i was going to do some uh footage but i was overheated and had a lot of my mind and I was trying to hook up on the Bluetooth with my phone to the drone and it's not Bluetooth it's Wi-Fi duh so I couldn't get any images but there was an older man here that, you know there at the time that real nice guy from Omro Wisconsin which is not too far from here from what he said and he missing all this front teeth an older guy real nice man and I asked him if he minded if I put the drone up for a little bit since he was going to be fishing and he said not in the least because one it won't bother the fish at all and he said I think that stuff's cool I'd love to see the footage you get well when I was trying to link it up the wrong way it wouldn't do that and he said well will it still fly and I said yeah and he said well go for it so I just took it up and ran it around a little bit and he just got a big thrill this older guy real nice guy a typical northern Wisconsin guy real nice real friendly well just now when I went there I got there there was a car there and like I said he was just getting out his fishing gear and whatever hadn't been there much just a few minutes before me talking to the guy and I said uh, I said something about you know you don't mind if I take up the drone for a few minutes do you? I just want to get a shot of the river while I'm up here and and he said, matter of fact, I would. And he was like really being a jerk about it. I almost at that point told him to, you know, something bad and then <laughs> fly it anyway. But I'm a, I'm a Southern gentleman, right? So I told the guy, I said, well, I don't know why it's going to bother you, uh, you know, because the fish aren't going to be bothered. And I told him about the guy the other day. And, and he said, well, it's none of your damn business why it was going to bother him. And he said, you can just go down the river for, you know, a half mile. There's a, a nice pullover spot in another section of the river where you can see this just like this. And I said, but where are you from? And he said, you know, Chicago. And then he said something unkind that I won't repeat. And I thought, nope, nope, you're, you're, just be nice. Just be nice. I went down the road and there, there was a little puddle thing but not like the river like we were just at and so I, I ended up turning around and coming back and the guy was gone he was just getting out his stuff and that fast he was gone so who thinks that the guy was here from a different state illegally fishing well hey motor warriors my battery died on me so I'm not sure how much of that story you actually heard about what was going on about going to fly the, over that marsh area and get a shot of the river and how I had come back and that guy from Illinois was gone which tells me that since he had just got there when I first came there that uh, he must have been up here fishing illegally and because he was just gone that fast he was gone well what really gets me is that 
you know, the, the time it took me to go to the end and turn around and, you know, come back and whatever, I could have already been up, done what I was going to do and long gone, and then he could have been about his merry way. But I think he was telling me about some other spot so that I'd leave so he could skedaddle before he got busted for, you know, fishing illegally because you can not only lose your license to fish uh, or hunt or anything, but they can even take your car. Uh, they can do all kinds of stuff. The laws up here, from my understanding, are pretty stiff. And they don't take con you know, kindly to people violating the laws, especially from out of state. So I don't know what all you heard. I don't know where my battery actually died. But what really makes me angry is that when I realized the battery was dead, I pulled off you know, by this little gas station or this little uh, bar-like thing into their parking lot where I had to turn. I pulled in there and I was swapping battery real quick. And all of a sudden I see a DNR uh, vehicle, you know, that's Department of Natural Resource, you know, like basically a, a wildlife cop, right? He went by, looked at me, and then looped around and came back up. And he said, did you just come out of the marsh? And I said, you know, out of that gravel road, whatever, the rustic road thing. And, and I said, why? Because I was way off that by then. And he said, well, he said, we got a call that somebody was out there with a drone. And he wasn't sure if he was trying to, you know, spot for deer, which is illegal, you know. Or if, uh, that's what the, guy, the DNR officer said or he wasn't sure if they were scaring away the crane, you know, with the drone, which is also against the law. And he said any kind of pestering of animals other than legal hunting is forbidden. You can't, you can't be doing that. And he said, and we got a call and I'm just, you know, he said he was on a motorcycle. And so I just said, well, sir, I am not the only motorcycle out here. And he said, no, I understand. I'm not accusing you. I'm just wondering, you know, and I said, well, look, I said, if if I was if I was out there flying a drone, I wouldn't have been chasing birds or or hunting, you know, looking for hunting spots where the deer might be. Because if tag on the on the back of the bike, I'm from Tennessee. I'm only up here visiting. And he kind of looked and he's like, Oh yeah, you're right. And 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 I said, But I tell you what, I t I think I know where that came from, where that call came from. And he said, Where's that? And I said, well, when I was first going through, I was going to stop and get out my, you know, I just told him I was going to get out my camera and, and do some shots. I didn't say drone, but I said I just I was going to get out my camera and do some video. And so there was a guy that just got there and we were talking. He seemed kind of rude. And and I asked him, you know, where he was from. And he told me he was from Illinois. And and I said, oh, man, so you're out of state. Why are you driving all the way up here? And he said, it's none of your damn business. And then. I said, well, you know, if, if you're that far away, I mean, it just doesn't make sense because we're pretty far from the border of Illinois. And I said, so what do they charge, you know, because I was thinking about getting a license to fish, you know, for a day before I go back. And I said, what do they charge for fishing out of state? And he paused and he said, well, that's none of your damn business either. And I, and I said, do you even have a, a fishing license or are you here fishing illegally? And there was a long pause, and he said, you're not the DNR, it's none of your damn business. And I, and I told that to the warden. And he said, yeah, it sounds like he was fishing illegally. But I tell you what, I'll keep my eye open for Illinois tags. If I see him out here fishing, rest assured, I will get him. In. And he said, have a good ride, sir, and, you know, enjoy your time in Wisconsin. And I said, thank you, sir, I love it up here. Y'all are nice. And, and, and then he left. So I didn't know how much of that you heard uh, before the thing died. We're running late now because of that. But anyway, Motor Warriors, if I put this up, I really appreciate y'all. And remember to live your life with the heart of a Viking warrior. Bye for now.